We're going to talk about close reading strategies in math. And this assignment is a strategy assignment. So it's nice if you can answer all the math questions, but to get all the points, you have to do the strategies because that's what the focus is. The goal today was about the strategy. Okay? So, Lily, um, well, I guess I can't help have you read yet because what's wrong with reading the first step? Well, you don't really have your step yet. It's read the blank, blank, blank. Problem. Right. It's read the blank problem. So just let me ask you, Lily, when you do a, a math problem, what do you think I might want to put there? Read the following. Lily. Uh, read like. Usually, like, it's the number problem, or, like... Oh, okay, like, problem one, one or yeah. Read, like, this much of that, or... Yeah, so the following problem. So it's a fill-in-the-blank, so it's kind of confusing. What do you think is supposed to be uh, there? Read the entire problem. Read the entire problem. Mm -hmm. All right, but you're right, Lily. There's a, You can't really do this with a bunch of blanks. Yeah. And good job, Jackson for knowing that. How many people went to Coal Creek? Just raise your hand. I noticed Coal Creek kids did this a lot last year, and I do think it was also at LES a little bit. So we're going to go through these strategies. The strategy we want is read the entire problem. Think about it as read the whole problem, the whole tamale, everything. Read it, okay? And then the second step would be that I want you guys today to underline the question. It's a simple task, but sometimes when we don't underline the question, we don't even know what the question is. And then you're going to number the, the steps if there's more than one step that you need to take to solve the problem. To be perfectly honest, that may look a little different from person to person. You know, like, um, Maya may think there's a, it's a two-step problem, and Brittany may think it's a three-step problem, and they both might be correct. So you're just making a number, you're numbering steps so you can help yourself. This is about you becoming an independent problem solver. After you do that, you're going to circle information or numbers that will help you answer the question. And we're going to practice this. So, Dave, this is when you are writing everything down. You're following along just like what I'm doing, filling this out. And then you're going to box any actions you need to take to solve the problem. And then if you keep reading, you're going to use your notes if you need to look up any strategies or vocabulary. And we're building a notebook all year long. So... Andy, what happens next after we do the first, second, and third thing? You have to solve the problem. You have to solve the problem. Eventually, kids, you got to solve the problem. Right? And then after you solve the problem, this is where Ms. Carew made, made and makes the most mistakes. You want to reread the problem to make sure you've answered <laughs> the question. And that's kind of funny, but how many of you, raise your hand, have done a problem and answered the wrong question? Yeah, a lot of us, right? So, Caleb, what's the first thing you're going to do? Go through the directions for me. Read the whole problem. Serafina, what's next? Nice and loud. Underline the question. Good. Third thing, Heather. Um, number the steps. If there's more than one step, you need to take the problem. Excellent. Uh, Brinley, what happens next? Um, circle the information or numbers that will help you answer the question. Excellent. Hayden, what's next? And then Shane, what do we do after all of that happens? Oh, yeah, use your notes if you need help. And then what happens next? Right, you're going to use your notes and solve the problem. 
And then after you solve the problem, Chad, what should you do? You should check your bunk. True. And what else should you do? You... What's this say? That's one checking your work. This is part of checking your work. Um, reread. Reread the problem, because Daniel, why? Why would? Why do we want to do that? To make sure you answered the question. Yeah. To make sure you answer the question. So we're going to do that. Several LMS teachers are. I'm going to model this. I'm the student. I've already made a mistake today, so help me out. Several LMS teachers are very busy organizing supplies and working with students in after school activities. True story. Use the close reading strategies above to answer the question below. Okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is read the problem. Ms. LaRondi is planning an art project for the sixth graders. She ordered 1.25 gallons of yellow paint, 0.5 gallons of blue paint and 1.125 gallons of red paint. Ooh. How much paint did she order? Write a number of sentence to accompany the problem. So in, I would have probably read that quietly. First thing I want you guys to do is I want everybody to put their pencils down because it's not a race to finish. I'll wait till all the pencils are down. Let go of them. I promise you'll have plenty of time. Okay, great. So now I'm going to underline the question. So I'm just looking through this. And this slows me down on purpose. Mo many of our mistakes are from rushing. It's purposefully slowing you down, but just a little bit. So I look at this, and the question is, how much paint did she order? So I know what I need to do. Then I'm going to number the steps if there's more than one step that I need to solve the problem. Well, for me, when I think about this, I'm just wondering, Maya, what kind of operations do you think you would do here to figure out how much paint she ordered? Um, addition? Yeah, so some of you might write off to the side, step one is addition, or you might just think if this is your first step, you have to figure out how much paint she ordered, step one. Hey, um, Detroit? Just stay with us there. And the second step is that I'm going to need to write a number sentence to accompany the problem. All right. So Detroit, help me out here. My next thing is I have to circle information or numbers that will help me answer the problem. So where's the first thing I would circle? What numbers and information? See anything there? Yeah, exactly. So, Daniel, you want to be a little specific about that? <clears throat> Circle 1.25. And you know what? I would say not just the numbers, but the units. Like 1.25 what? Gallons of yellow paint. And then, Chad? Yes. What else? I would circle 1.125 gallons of that. Red paint. Red paint. And this this is really in a bad place. There's also a 0.5 gallons of blue paint. Now you can only do this when you have a worksheet. You can't do this in your books, but you could put a clear view over your book. And so I've done that, and then the action, there's an action word that's telling me a command. What's the command, Jackson? Uh, it says, how, uh, write a number sentence to accompany the problem. Right. I have to write. I have to write a number sentence. Write a number sentence to accompany the problem. So I know that took a long time, but when you do this by yourself and you're not having a conversation with 23 people, it doesn't take a long time. So now I've done all of that, so I'm going to solve the problem. I don't need to refer to my notes because Maya already helped me. She told me I'm going to do addition. I agree with her. So I'm going to make my workspace nice so you guys can follow along too and do the same thing. We're all going to add and we can compare answers. So set up your addition problem. And when you do an addition problem, it's pretty helpful. Maddie, what should I put in there to make it a little easier? What do we do? when things aren't all lined up perfectly. What could I add in? Um, like for just zeros? Yeah, add in placeholders. Good job. Add in placeholders. So add them in. 
You guys check my work. We'll compare notes. We're working independently for a minute. I get 2.875 gallons. Raise your hand if you agree with me. Oh, check it if you haven't done your math yet. Okay. Double check my work. Okay. If you look at the bottom right side of your page, there's an answer blank. So I'm part done. I've done this. I've done step one. So I'm going to put that in there. Now raise your hand if you agree with me. Has everybody checked my work? Raise your hand. Are you following along there? You got 2.875? Okay. okay, you're fixing it? Okay, so I have to write another sentence. This is sometimes new. In books now, this is a new thing the last couple of years. A lot of books ask for a number sentence. Did you know a number sentence is just an equation? So my number sentence is just an equation. It might be a little tidier than my work. It's just sort of finalizing that I did this work and I'm going to make it really clear and say that when I add up these three numbers, I'm going to make an equation. A number sentence is an equation. That means it has an equal sign. If you're just telling the reader, that would be me a lot of the time, or your partner, what you did. Okay, and that's my number sentence. Now, it doesn't ask, and I've done everything, so I'm done. It doesn't ask me to add in a little summary statement, but it's not a bad idea. So, David, how much paint did she order? Yeah, does anybody know the benchmark fraction for that? Do you? No, like what fraction is the same as 0.875? Serafina? That's the place value. It would be 2 and 875,000. So that's place value. Hayden, do you know what the benchmark fraction is for this? Like, is it fourths or fifths or eighths or? So that's the place value. Jackson? It is eighths. Do you know how many? It's really close to it. Do you agree with her? You also two and seven eighths. So you could, that's just good practice. We've done the problem. It might help to write a little summary sentence. She ordered 2.875 gallons of paint. Okay. You're going to practice that task with the next three problems. And if you are more advanced, You'll go to the fifth problem and make up your own good challenge problems for a partner. When I come around and check, and you're doing these next three problems, I'm here. Let's see, I got an extra one in there. I want to see, sorry about that, all of these circles and lines on the problems here to the right. You can go back to your table group. You can have a choice seat and choice partner today. You have 15 minutes to get those three problems done. Jeez.